Hi, we're going to be running a human computer question answering competition at NIPS 2017, and we put together this video to help try to convince you to take part in the competition. The competition is based around a game called Quiz Bowl, and Quiz Bowl is a game that is both fun for humans and challenging for computers. It's a trivia game, and it's structured in such a way that the questions start out hard and then get easier as they go along, and someone playing the game, either a human or a computer, needs to figure out when they have enough information to answer the question. This is probably best shown through an example. Here's an example of Ken Jennings facing off against a computer question answering system at the University of Washington in 2015. The change duck revealed this nation's leader gave Valerie de Star de Stang two diamonds from its leader. You're actually wrong. That's incorrect. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll continue the question. Who rose to power with the help of Alexandra Bonza in the San Silvestre coup, declared himself president for life in 1972 and was deposed in Operation Barracuda. For 10 points, name this country once led by Jean Bedel Bocasa from its capital, Bangui. Uh, Bangui, Central African Republic? The question starts off very hard, and neither the computer nor Ken Jennings knows the correct answer. Eventually, the computer gets it wrong, and then Ken Jennings has a chance to answer. But during the beginning of the question, both players needed to figure out whether they had enough information to answer, and the computer chose wrongly. One question I get a lot is, how is this different from Jeopardy? Jeopardy is also a question answering competition made famous in part through IBM's Watson. But unlike Jeopardy, Quiz Bowl has this property that is called pyramidality. And so pyramidality is basically what we saw in the question just a second ago. The question starts out hard and then gets easy. This allows the better players, the smarter players, the faster players to answer the question early and to show that they know more. Jeopardy, in contrast, gives the entire question to the contestants and then the contestants must decide whether to answer or not. It's a one-time decision. Whereas in Quiz Bowl, you're deciding after every word, do I have enough information to answer or not? Let's take a look at a question to see why Quiz Bowl is so challenging. This question, like the Quiz Bowl question we saw a second ago, starts out hard and then gets easy. Hopefully by the end of the question, you can recognize that this question is about the magic flute or die Zauberflute. What makes this particularly challenging is that many of the beginning clues aren't things that you could look up in, say, an information retrieval system. For example, you need to know that the librettist of this opera is Emmanuel Chicaneda, even though he isn't mentioned in the question by name at all. And you also need to know that at the debut of the opera, he played Papagino, another character who, again, isn't mentioned by name at all. You also need to connect the first mention of Papageno to the second mention of Papageno using co-reference. Co-reference is a persistent problem in Quiz Bowl questions. For example, you have Tamino, who is mentioned about three quarters of the way through the question. This is something you can look up in an information retrieval system, but you need to match that to a series of previous mentions that don't mention Tamino by name. This is the opposite of how co-reference usually functions, where you start off with an explicit mention, and then you have pronouns or references like this man. And then finally, if you reach the end of the question and you still can't figure out the answer, Quizball often uses semantic word games to give a clue about what the answer could be. And so here you could use semantic properties of an enchanted woodwind instrument to get to the correct answer of the magic flute. We've set up a server so that computers all over the world can play Quiz Bowl in the same way that humans do. That functions as a moderator in a Quiz Bowl match. Your program, a client, connects to the server and says, I'd like to play. And then the server responds saying which questions are available for your system to answer. You select one of the questions, you don't have to go in order, and then you get to say how many words you want of that question. It's a little like name that tune. And so you can first ask for, say, word number one from question number one. And then the server will tell you that that word is extremist. You can then ask for additional words if you don't have enough information to answer. 
And so you could ask for the second word, you could ask for the third word, and then let's say that you have enough information to answer the question. And so then you can say, I'd like to answer with Barry Goldwater. And so you can give that answer, and the server will record that answer. And the server will record the position of your answer associated with the last word that you saw of the question. We're trying to make it fairly easy for you to get started with this task. We've provided all the code that we use in our question answering system. It's a little messy. Uh, we're also going to provide, as of August 1st, a streamlined system that should be very easy to get running. We also have a bare bones system that shows how the server works using just a simple word matching algorithm for answering questions. I'm also going to be using this code in my graduate machine learning course at the University of Maryland. If you're interested in using this competition in your course during the fall semester of 2017, don't hesitate to contact me and I'll gladly share the materials that I'm using in my course. The overall timeline for participation looks something like this. By at least August 1st, we'll have the reference systems and data available. By September 1st, the server will be up and running so you can test it out. We're only going to allow a week for people to actually enter the competition. So the second week in October, you'll be able to access the system with competition data. If you submitted a system and want to share how that system works, the deadline for submitting a white paper is November 1st, but the competition doesn't end there. We'll invite top teams to bring their systems to NIPS and face off against a top human team of Quiz Bowl players at the actual NIPS event in California. We've been facing off against human teams for a while, and it's quite a bit of fun. Our first competition was in 2014 against a group of people who had won a lot of money on Jeopardy. It ended in a tie. We then faced off against Ken Jennings. Uh, we managed to beat him in an exhibition match at Seattle. But we were soundly defeated by a team of top humans in Texas the following year. We ran another shared task competition at NACL in 2016. And the winner of that shared task faced off against California's NASAT team, a group of uh, some of the best high school quiz bowl players in the United States. The humans narrowly won that match. Just this year in 2017, our system squeaked by against a team of top humans in Atlanta. So it's a very, very neck and neck match between humans and computers. So we hope the machine learning community will come out, put forth their best efforts, build very strong systems, take on each other, and then showcase their work at NIPS in 2017 in California and take on a team of top human Quiz Bowl players. If you're interested, please visit the competition website. Also feel free to reach out to any of the competition organizers, myself, Mohit Iyer, Pedro Rodriguez, Ha huh, huh, or Hal Dalmay. We're happy to answer questions about the competition specifically, about Quiz Bowl generally. So please feel free to reach out to any or all of the organizers. We want to have as many people from as many places using as many varied techniques as possible. And we hope to see you in California at NIPS 2017.